hunt into this lane. Night Stalker is just going to be an absolute sitting duck. So oh, it feels a little bit weirder for uh, for Beast Coast, but for whatever reason, I do like their draft. I don't know what it is. <laughs> no mana, really. Now. Uh, maybe the uniqueness coming out for 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 Beast Coast. I'm not convinced they're able to execute a draft like this. And I okay, like never mind. I'm going Entity. He's queued up the Midas. You, you, you can't go Midas plus Aghanim Shard on uh, Night's Talker. It's way too greedy. I think you need to pick one or the other, and Shard just is better in my eyes. You get it sooner, it's cheaper, and uh, you know lets you have that constant presence moving forward. Again, you're trying to outscale an Alchemist. Not going to happen. Is Midas really the same as Shard? I feel like it is. How? You don't get, you don't get nearly as much gold or experience. Yeah, but you can use it on Ancients. Can't use Midas on Ancients. I mean, sure, that's a great point. Midas doesn't... Uh, sorry, the shot doesn't give you as much experience, though. I feel like it's a big concern. Ancients give more experience. Uh, I mean... All right, all right. Checkmate! Yeah, right. <laughs> that's right. Um, <laughs> so, no, so just as Midas is, uh, is straining you the other way? It is. I, I really feel a lot more confident when I see Night Stalkers go the, the shard instead. I think it's just way too passive and it doesn't link up perfectly with your draft. It's not even like they have anything that's going to be building into, you know, a Helm of the Dominator or anything like that that you need to use the Midas on to. So I think it's just going to slow their draft too much. And it looks like they're swapping the lanes as well. Yeah, I like it. Well, I was saying it also looks like Entity read this. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, I like that too. <laughs> <laughs> this is. Like, oh no, this is. I don't think this is good. Again, you kind of want the Night Stalker uh, avoiding the, the Razor. They they see Sable Island. Was that a pun? Was that a pun? I don't... Avoiding? Uh, it's not really, but I mean, we're, we're definitely reaching there. Uh, no, it wasn't a pun. We're, we're chilling. It. Yeah, both sides have scouted it. Both sides have this, these deep wards they're looking to play with, so it looks like Beast Coast are comfortable to set up with a, an aggressive tri lane, one that we do not see often anymore. I mean, yeah, Whisper's going to be able to secure enough farm for himself. This isn't a kill lane. Like, Wyvern plus Alchemist has no synergy whatsoever. So, I understand the reasoning behind it, but you've got to get kills onto Fishman. A decent I... amount of damage. Fishman still got to sell to heal himself up. Afterwards, they uh, Dire blocked the small camp. Of course, going up against a Chen, so they're not going to have the capability to be able to reset the equilibrium, which is going to be really important against this aggressive tri lane. I mean, as long as they see that the Nyx Assassin is there, how is this going aggressive into the tri lane? Just wanting to deny away a lot of that attack. Hobie should be dead here. K1. They got the Void back up, the right clicks as well. Yeah, Toby steps way too far forward trying to get the kill and Beast Coast, they capitalize. Me more bottom lane though, Whispers in some trouble. Trying to juke through the tree lives, Concoction's back up shortly, but the movement speed from the Coddle to get back to safety. A little low on the regen though, and they actually see this courier walking on through with the uh, the boots there, so Katami should be able to get rid of it, and I mean, that's going to make his life a little bit more difficult, and less the the quick micro coming through. Ooh, got to get back to the tower. Don't get greedy, Whisper. Oh, Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Hey, he gets it. <laughs> oh, no. All right, let's quickly take a look at... trouble, though. Concoction, level two as well. Sableye acid spray dropped, and... Nice little bit of bounty picked up for the position one alchemist. I do want to quickly take a look at mid real quick before the action breaks out top with this tri lane. As <laughs> too late. Yeah, too late. The action's out. Toby's so only got one point in the static link at the moment. The cogs being a bit of a nuisance for Toby to be able to close the distance onto Gojiro. Fishman doesn't have too much long left on the battery cell, but he does have stick charges one. to be able to turn if it's required. And well, there's not the case. This entity find their second kill of the game. Bottom lane, Whisper. Going straight back. Oh, he's chilling, he's chilling. Concoction now, trying not to bait the observer. Oh, no, sorry. Well, you did. And uh, Stinger, he's getting baited a little bit as well by Ooh. these creeps. Oh, will the creeps turn around? Oh, looks like the battery salt's hitting onto him. Did Okay, no, he, he stole the Banisher. That just wasn't a creep randomly using the perch on to him. the bounty too. Rewarded. Body block we'll Stinger. That. Nice. All right. Lots of cool little individual skill players coming through here. 
Paris Love right. as well in that mid lane. He's taken a tiny little bit of a lead. It's going to get greater, though, once he picks up that... Uh, don't actually see the Soul Ring all that often on the uh, the Kunker. More often into the double braces, and yeah, he's actually changed back up to go back into it. But yeah, level 5 onwards, you do kind of get bullied out of this lane on the puck. But here at bottom lane, he's used to spike Carapace early. He's going to be playing off the back of the, the stun to hold Sableye away from the concoction. Unfortunately, Gojira won't be able to cut his way through the tree line. They still do lose Katomi. A blast from afar is enough to secure the kill. So nice little steps coming out from Gojira. And he's a speedy boy as well. Don't, no, don't get hit by the Sated Torment to Gojira. Stop it. Yeah, mid lane level 5 achieved now by Chris Luck. Picks up the water rune, continues to farm. He'll go into the, the small camp just to accelerate that even further. And then as soon as he hits up onto that level 6, look to most likely make a rotation, I would say, towards Bark. This is the downside of running the Alchemist in the safe lane. You're not hitting that level 6 early enough. You don't really have a ton of that movement speed and regen. So with a Coddle plus a Kunker, you're just dead. You see, Grajira is always a support that likes to make a lot of rotations to mid, so... We're gonna see what he wants to do over the next coming minute because we do have those power runes spawning. Very important for Storm Swarmer to be able to control and Cod as well if he can get maybe Haste to step into the side lane. He'll probably be looking to block some camps as well. He's got multiple observers and sentries at the ready to maybe move into the triangle and slow down Sableye's farm. Potentially, I'm hearing a boat being used in that mid lane, and well, it's a solo kill onto the puck, not something that you expect all that often, and being able to deny away that level 6 is pretty significant. Might see if there's any stacks built up as well, doesn't seem like it. Might have seen in the, uh, yeah, in the fog, he pings it out, that Wyvern is here, so will that trigger a move at all onto Sableite? Doesn't look like it, he's farming all the way back underneath his tower. This is nice, though, for Sableite. He's, he's back in his lane. He's like, oh, off lane. I'm used to this. <laughs> I don't know if they can get the kill onto Whisper. As much damage as they can possibly pump out is nice to try and shove him out of the lane. Him off top side, though. Under the cogs, Fishman. He's got two points of the battery assault to be playing with. This can help out the Toby to stack up the static link damage. Killed off the Chen. K1 does have some creeps to play with thanks to the Chen's army, and it looks like K1 should be able to come on top out in the battle, but he hasn't taken into calculations of the cogs to hold him into place. So Toby, he can reposition to the T1. Very important that Fishman was able to get rid of that uh, Sadio Mindstealer as well. It was just doing way too much, denying away a lot of this uh, mana pool that, of course, Clockwork needs to be able to protect lively, the, uh, the Razor early on into this game. Especially now that it's night time as well. In fact, the Banisher removed as well. Just put bottom oh, lane's gonna like be a bit Sableye. cautious. Ooh, stuns himself. Ooh. If he got the concoction off, good. probably yeah, would have been a kill with three point spray and Katomi as well, being able to step in with the combo. But overall, I must say I was not expecting the lanes to go how they have so far for Beast Coast. Chris Lock top of the net worth that's the lane that we were definitely expecting to do incredibly well i mean solo kill is a thousand gold advantage over the puck but really k1 he's having a pretty good time as well more net worth than the razor yeah certainly wasn't expecting that i mean they did end up getting did they get the kill first yeah it was onto toby right that first blood went k1's way so i think that's the real difference maker right just getting a little bit too cocky too confident with the uh, the clockwork not in the perfect position to be able to back him up. So the turnaround was just way too devastating. Gojira again, invading the jungle, trying to scout out, prevent the Alchemist from being able to farm. You'll see, all right, no creeps there. Is that even, oh, it even picks up on the Observer one, maybe? Ooh, oh, I didn't see it. That would have been a really valuable pickup. Just for again. He's gonna get the TP coming through from C Smile. They won't be able to catch up the Sableye, but they will run into Katami, at least into the tree line. So rotation of the Conquer, just securing them a kill onto a support. Nothing crazy. Luckily enough that Seasmile did make that rotation, though Whisper, with the initial burst through, didn't have enough mana to even use the Chakra Magic. Uh, sorry, it didn't have the cooldown to use the Chakra Magic on himself. Top lane, they're going to be eyeing up K1. 
See if he's going to be able to get out of the cogs fast enough. Toby, awkward positioning as well. Okay, one still trying to juke to the northern side. Plasma fields back up shortly, but instead he's going to run to Stinger's location just to help him escape out of the aggression maneuver that we see coming out from the lads on Entity. I mean, it's K1. He's going to go the Midas, right? Like, this is what we come to expect all the way back from his Wraith King days. It's just a pretty standard item for him. And it is, to be fair, like... On the river? Oh, I'm here in a dream coil. Yeah, Storm Storm is going to make sure he doesn't get clipped by the torrent. Instead, the Spike Carapace is what connects, but he's out of mana on the park. So he's going to need a rotation to come out. It'll be Fishman moving over towards the river. They've got the boat as well. A nice use of the phase shift, and now he's got enough mana to jaunt away. See, so smell the straight torrent. It's going to land. They'll need a right click, and he should be able to get it after the phase shift. Oh my lord. See, smile. He's on point to start this game one. They're going to drag back Fishman as well. The combo will be off the mark, unfortunately. But the tower, is that enough to stop the Conqueror? Yeah, looks like it is. Not perfect, but effective. You know, uh, Beast Coast having a fantastic day so far. Able to claim some unexpected wins and... Oh, K1 just continuing to pick up the pace on this top side. Still, he's not keeping up with Saberlight, but that's to be expected. A few more points now into the Grievel's Greed after just the the one, excuse me, in the Unstable Concoction. And it's really only once you hit that that Midas timing, to be honest, on K1 that he really wants to start making some aggression happen. This puck is... I don't want to say the puck have the, has the potential to get out of control because Kunker obviously has his number, but... Oh, nice little stun coming through there from the Spike Carapace. But it, but it is always something to be concerned about, right? The ability to be able to catch this uh, core keeper of the light to be able to stop the Chen army from pushing on forward. That's what Puck's really stopping. And you see Puck is trying to work towards the Witchblade back in the jungle. One thing though I've always been impressed from the from Beast Coast and we saw in their earlier series today versus Aster is just the the consistent basis that they are always looking to block up camps. Again they've done it. Observe Ward inside the jungle, another sentry dropped as well to really slow down the farm that NT are able to find. And that Witchblade is going to be really important as well. Like, he, he's gone the Robe of the Magi because obviously he needs to, it's going to accelerate his farm. I really don't want to see him wait for the Blitz Knuckles. You need that chain mail when you're up against a Night Stalker and a, a Kunker that are just starting to run at you. Stinger with his micro has been perfect against Fishman. That tornado to drag him out of the cogs, and our K1 just flies in, secures the kill. Quash you happy with that, getting in closer to his item timing down by the bottom outpost, Storm Stormer. He's not going to have the damage required as well, so Gojira also steps out of harm's way. Beast Coast, they're off to a flying start. 4,000 net worth fee. We just see the levels. A big issue for Entity at the moment. Clockwork level 4. I just got 6 thanks to the Tome, so maybe they can think about defending top, and Fishman's going to lead him. First hook shot of the game. Toby's nearby with the Eye of the Storm as well, so you'll take whatever kill you can get when you are this far behind. Okay, able to get a little bit there, but this is what we were talking about before with Gojira, right? Liking to invade and see Smile even just dropping this oh. boat onto the Ancient Stack. Love that from him. So taking a lot of that net worth away. I mean, this is a level 12 Kunker. Yeah. Like, he is crazy farmed right now relative to Storm Sp Stormer, level 9. Alchemist, level 9. It's going to, of course, pick up once he gets the Sacred Relic for himself, and he's only a few hundred gold away, but Radiance right now, all of Beast Coast's Radiance movements are just based around this Conquer. Speaking of him, 300 away from that BKB, so absolutely no concerns for the Puck once he gets to that stage. Yeah, once you get BKB and Mech, this T1 tower is going to go down. You, I, I don't see what Entity can do to protect it. They're probably going to be requiring ultimates to, to keep it alive and in particular that winter's curse as well so we're gonna see one ultimate come out from fishman down bottom targeting down gojiro if the damage required to kill off the nyx assassin again man just being able to scurry away he's gonna run under the sentry storm stormer does it predict with the orb no way oh my lord if he didn't hand a god gojiro would have gone down Let's see if anyone actually wants to connect through onto this. I mean, Gajira's kind of playing on his own, so the Spike Carapace not going to be effective enough to catch it. Look at Coddle. Whisper's starting to make that movement through. 
Well, look at this, Carapace in front of the creep wave, perhaps. Seeing if he, he could catch him on the escape. <laughs> no, in the wrong spot. Oh, very, very quick fingers coming through there. You appreciate the attempt, but just not able to land it. Stingo should be able to use the Wild Wing Ripper to push himself away. And got and the, the little pig piggy pole. pole as well for good measure. Even Puck's trying to use it to <laughs> close the distance, but unfortunately not the case. So, oh man, Beast Coast really was not expecting them to have a start that they're, they're having at the moment. Again, we just see them constantly looking to invade the jungle. Sableye parked himself at the triangle. Very close towards this Radiance. I told you there was something I liked about this Beast Coast lineup. I couldn't put it into words, but it was, uh, it was there. I suppose one of the advantages, of course, of going this hand of Midas, I'm going to try and justify it a little bit here, uh, against my own better judgment, is that it does get you to that level 15 very quickly. And Midas gives you that 40 attack speed. It's very efficient uh, attack speed item. So the damage component that you're missing gets recovered once you hit that uh, earlier timing with the Dark Ascension damage. Do you see it's going to be all eyes though on how Entity can defend this T1 tower. This is a must defend tower for them. You, you need to keep the jungle alive. Radiant's complete on the elk, but Sableye's still going to need a, a lot more time for him to find his items. So all eyes on how they utilize their next ultimates. And I think whenever it's ooh, the Dark Ascension for top lane, Toby is going to be playing around with the static link. K1 can break it. But he's not going to go back in. So that's an ultimate wasted. And that's two minutes. Honestly, that's really big. That's two minutes now. Well, you don't have Dark Ascension to, to pressure this T1 tower. At least it'll still be nighttime, though, once he breaks out of it. Well, they I saw think TB, TB was... bottom. Gojira, look at the backstab coming up for the Nyx Assassin. Great positioning once again. They're going to start to rotate some supports down. Everyone's coming down from Entity. They want to take this team fight. Sea Smile is not the easiest kill. The run buff along with the BKB to be playing with. They're starting to dwindle him down. Half health. He's able to get the ultimate off nice the curse to leash them all inside the middle. They'll kill off the clockwork, but Entity, if they need to reposition, you don't have the damage now to go up against Beast Coast. Yeah, just a few seconds left of daytime. Everyone gets healed up, and then K1's right there, ready again to start pumping this damage into the tower. It's not the greatest in terms of like being able to deny away the Ancients from Alchemist, but it's still pretty effective, right? They're going to start sweeping across towards the mid lane after they shut this lane out one more time. They're not worried at all. No static oh, links, no hook man. shot. <laughs> Sorry, Gojira's got a Midas queued up. What is going on? It, We're like... seeing it all across the board, man. I, I, I don't personally like it, but, you know, if you want to scale, this is the item to do it. Three heroes on top of you. It's going to slow down you being able to pick up that Midas. Come on. Hate to see it. Gojira's like, guys, I just, I want my items. I, I want to be able to act like a core. So not going to be the case. Fishman yeah, will be forced to hook shot defensively. K1. Storm Summer's going to be in some trouble for the moment. Cold Embrace. Give some health back. But it sets himself in a position for the blast to connect, and our K1 can easily dive under the tower. Still another 10 seconds left on that Winter's Curse, and they have no turnaround potential, and the lane shove is basically only coming from the puck. Nice use of the torrent as well by Chris Luck, being able to catch Fishman on the retreat. Okay, again, this is the tower that they had to defend the entire time. Gojira even just going looking for more. Dark Stingo? Ascension in a few seconds time, so they might be able to get this, plus another kill on top of it. Alchemist. And it's a great himself. curse as well from Katomi. Targeting down Whisper and Sea Smile. They need a little bit more damage to get the kill, and they will in the end. Toby to the one that gets the claim. Meanwhile, Sableye, he's going to charge into the middle. Storm Stormstormer on the respawn as well. Good luck killing Sea Smile. Yeah, that's not going to happen. And Sableye, he doesn't have a concoction target. I don't they think still you can kill Sableye, though. Ooh, I don't think you can see Smile as well. Yeah. The, these two cores aren't dying for a little bit. Alchemist still needs his time to be able to sit back and farm. You're really lacking in damage on anyone right now. Probably Toby is the one that needs to get in on top of the Conqueror in particular. It's Night Stalker that's just going to be pretty free to have a free game. We'll end up going into that Aghanim Shard next before the Basher. Might is already starting to pay off level 13. On Night Stalker right now. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Toby, I think just caught a glimpse of Gojira with that plasma field, so 
Whisper, will, Whisper won't be able to TP down to try and kill the Razor. So what do we need to I see understand. come out? Sorry, I'm hearing a Cogs down on the bottom side. Could you uh, find out the clockwork and it looks like C-Smile will be able to pick up another freebie. You just had to take this mid-tier one tower though, right? Like they, they were getting very greedy, very hungry for kills. Feels like uh, that objective would have been so influential. You've got the Radiant attack. side, you've got the potential to go into Roshan. You want to take away as much of Alchemist's free jungling space as you can. Stormstorm are having to make the decision to not stick around for that, uh, that Invis rune. Radiant structures are fortified. Speaking of Alchemist and K1, up onto the top side goes the Night Stalker, but to be able to get on his merry way. Almost be Kibby on Sableye. On a lane, Fishman. He's gonna be able to hook damage. shot onto Whisper. Right next to the T1 tower as well, so K1's gonna be able to TP down. He thought Toby would be able to, to enter the fight. That's not the case, and now Gojira's also stalking out Toby's location. Mid lane, the Storm Summer's gonna be able to intercept C Smart, but he just runs straight through the puck, pops the BKB, no cares in the world, but you do have to have some threat of Katomi with the Winter's Curse. It sets up for a beautiful coil as well. A Sableye's able to enter the fight, but the damage is lacking once again. They don't have a way to deal with the sustain coming out from the Chen, and now with the chain control, as K1 flies into the river, offers the Sand to lock the Storm Stormer puck into place, and there'll be no escape from Entity. Yeah, really nicely done once again from Beast Coast. It's just finding the ideal target. Uh, Chris Luck, he was a little apprehensive there because, you know, you were up against the Winter's Curse, but he was BKB, so eventually realizing that he could just walk in, finish off the target, and, uh, well, he got caught out by the Dream Call at the end, but it doesn't matter. You've also reached up onto level 16 now on Hector, so he is uh, having that Dark Ascension damage. He's got the Agadim Shard as well, so he's just going to be able to accelerate his farm at a pretty damn rapid rate. I was worried. Like, th this is all on the back of the rest of the Beast Coast lineup for being so active on the map, right? Like, 11 kill involvement so far from this Keeper of the Light going into an Orchid build. I like it a lot. Do we have to see something creative come out from Toby and Stormstormer because of how far behind they are in this game? Sometimes it's not about being creative. Sometimes it's just about, you know, you hook shot in onto your, the Keeper of the Light. You got to have someone following you. You know, it, maybe if Razor is there in the puck, they actually get that kill and that entire team fight doesn't happen. See, they have such a gigantic lead on Beast Coast and hold that talk is bottom. No, we're probably able to get in with the Orchid. They've got such a huge lead and they're going to scale decently with the Midas's now. Like K1's got his. Gojira just completed his Midas as well, so his next item's gonna come out a lot faster than what they would be expecting. tommy has been spending a lot of time just in the jungle, farming on his own with that Wraith Band on the Winter Wyvern. Gojira? I'll see the Nyx Assassin. Level 10 Nyx and Sableye's gonna jump and he's... <laughs> what, what just happened there? Did he just... The Spike Caribou stunned them all? It looked like Sableye stunned himself as well with a concoction, but... Regardless, they get the kill. You'll take whatever you get, especially if you can lead this into a T1 tower. Illusion. In most pubs, uh, what just happened there on the bottom side after that team fight would result in uh, Alchemist destroying his items because why are you taking my farm razor? But so important for Toby to get this BKB. Uh, once he gets to that stage, there is nothing that's actually going to stop him from just running straight at you. Zero BKB disables, and he's the one that needs to prevent the influence of uh, Chris Luck from continuing. Right now he's playing a flawless game, 5-0 and 5. If he's able to do that, then maybe the Alchemist and hell, even the Puck have a way to go into these team fights with a lot more confidence. <sighs> Going for the Ghost Scepter on Storm Stormer ahead of the Blink Dagger. That's the sort of situation that we're in right now. Will he get landed Storm onto Storm by the Carapace? He's I don't think there's the follow-up. Maybe there is. The slow as well coming up. Fishman might have the cogs to hold them back. It's a good cogs. Be able to get the clockwork instead. Is it going to hook shot to get some distance away? K1's also in pursuit. Going to try and catch up the storm stormer, but the orb out to safety. I don't think Entity are going to have the damage for quite some time to be able to stop the push. You've got the sustain coming out from the illuminate. Nine stalk is not easy to kill. The conquer with the rump off, like we mentioned. Chen, mech, hand of god. 
this should be a couple of easy towers going down. Oh no. Potentially. I mean, it depends who they catch, right? Like, what's the vision looking like? Right now, all of Dyer's vision is on their own side of the map. So, uh, sorry, on the other side of the map. So, it's not really achieving much against what Beast Coast want to do right now, which is just continue to run at you. They've got this advantage. I suppose the glyph is available, but they're going to go for this group movement coming through he's, the Saber Light with the Blink Dagger. He's not oh, dying. He could be early is good. Yeah, but that, that's fine. I think popping the Blink Dagger on its own is pretty good. Toby maybe a little bit late to that team Looks fight. up to the back. Instant use of the Orchid. Fishman won't be able to play with the Cogs. The Centaur Conqueror along with the Torrent's going to hold them in place, but Katomi jumps in, but the Curse doesn't do much. They'll kill off the Nyx Assassin, but the rest of Beast Coast have successfully retreated back to the Tier 1 tower. They're still going to try and target down Singer at the moment. He gets the hair that got off before the last little bit of damage to secure the kill. And our Saber Light forced to BKB TPR. That is a victory though from Entity. You get two kills and comes at no cost. It was messy for sure, but at least it was something. They get some of this net worth lead back towards them. Stormstormer, ideally so, being the one to secure that kill, bringing him closer to the Blink Dagger. You get a buyback as well out of the, uh, the Nyx Assassin. So even though it wasn't any cause, it's just these little things, you know, bringing the puck closer towards the Blink Dagger. In an ideal world, Toby's there much sooner. He needed to be there to be able to lock in onto the Kunker. Again, there's nothing Kunker could do to stop him if he does that. And then maybe you actually feel a bit more confident about going in for a longer time onto the Alchemist because you're not going to have as much damage coming back your way. Now, uh, being the expert Winter Wyvern player that you are, Mr. Mr. Gonad, what are we... Are we expecting just kind of the stock standard out of Katomi? Like he likes his blink into shard and maybe shadow blade, but are you wanting maybe a different item for the Wyvern in particular in a game like this? Nothing really you can get, honestly. Uh, maybe he needs a Ghost Scepter just in case the the uh, Night Stalker is able to get in on top of him, but I think K1's already preempting that a little bit, having the Nullifier queued up after his Lincoln Sphere and Blink Dagger, so... Yeah, I think he's just going to need to adjust on the fly to whatever we see K1 looking to itemize for first. He has that Lincoln's queued up beforehand on K1, so he's incredibly far. Second in net worth, of course, the man on top is going to be Sableye on the Alchemist. It's often expected, though, for a hero like this. The Beast Cross have to be incredibly happy with the start they've had. 8,000 net worth lead against an Alchemist lineup that is usually the ones in head. Under What's the Chen army looking like at the moment? Doesn't seem like he has too much to play with on, on Stinger. I was going to say, he, he, he's been having a... Oh, Katomi? Oh no, the creep's nice micro. Stinger. I'm going to be brought down. That's Curse on cooldown as well, so this tier 2 tower should be for free. Do you think about going high ground? Mm. I think you just try and bait TP's back. I think you're happy enough if you're able to do that and then just opens up the map. You can see Stormstormers kind of preempting that a little bit, saying, look, if we back up, if you have to back up as well, then at least you're not going to get too much extra. But they're just going to full-on commit. No curse, I suppose. They're just like, all right, let the death uh, fall go. Oh, fish man. Oh, my lord. Oh, he almost goes down. They can't deal with the summons, it looks like. And this barracks, yep. I think they no just... curse, that's what happens. Oh, no. Boko Jiro caught a glimpse of Puck teeping and they were going to charge up the Impale. Not the case. Barracks gone down and really no threat for Beast Coast. He's gone into the Yule Scepter on the Nyx Assassin and I'm, I'm kind of okay with it. I mean, it's going to allow you to avoid a lot of this damage if the backline gets jumped onto. But what I kind of want to see out of him is a Blink Dagger. Like, yeah, it's going to allow you to get that quick burst again onto Park or Winter Wyvern. But even just being able to blink into the range of... Aegis just really expired. Cool. They TP down bottom as well. But they don't have answers to the BKB. Big issues from Entity. Curse being on cooldown. Toby, They're still going to chase. Just needs to be there, man. The hook shots at the ready. Still no one else is looking to connect to the Conquer. This should be a kill they're able to pick up. The Hand of God's available, but it will not matter. It doesn't come out. And meanwhile, Stormstormer. He's also ran into the Stinger's Chen. Whisper's going to try and move to his location just to offer some assistance if required. Hand of God next to the T2 Tower. 
Puck's going to be a little bit cautious with his men and pull end position, and Gojira's going to try and step in. The stun is out, but the curse is well buying some time as K1 is going to charge into the middle, though. Good position Healing by Toby, though. With the, with the Winter Wyvern, he's going to turn now to think about the clockwork, the static link proving to be an issue, but meanwhile, up to the northern side, Whisper gets the finishing blow, snags the gem, but Sableye, he says, give me that back. You're not getting away with this one, but it looks like you'll easily dodge out to the left, and K1, he's not done with his food just yet once again, but the Dark Ascension, free mobility, means that the Night Stalker can easy it's dance around in these fights, and they'll finish it with another kill as K1 up to an unstoppable streak. It was a really good use of the static link there. If we can uh, get a replay of that, that would be fantastic, because it means that the rest of the team just clumped up into one small position. They know that there was no AoE damage because you were able to take the Kunkka out of the equation super early on, and uh, it means that you just can't focus in onto all of these heroes with all of that HP being, sorry, the attack damage being drained away. So it's a, it's a good use of the Orchid, pushing him away. As soon as the Night Stalker joins, this is what I'm looking out for. Just instantly coming in. There's the static link being used onto K1. And they are, but there's not too many people alive, so I don't think too much will happen. Maybe it will. Let's have a look back live. Stuff's happening. <laughs> Fishman. It's got a hook shot. Oh, it makes it out. The Spirit Vessel is doing a lot of damage. The blast from downtown and Fishman's got a tick out. Has not been the easiest game for the clockwork. Toby, you'd hate to force a BKB in a position like this. Oh no, they cursed the Lincoln. Sableye's gonna be in. The call as well, holding them together. They got the BKBs, but Sableye with the damage along with Toby, trying to push back C Smile, but as soon as the BKBs expire from Entity, they need to escape the area. Just things aren't seeming to to link up all that effectively for Entity right now. You know, when when the rays is going in, the chemical rage is wearing off. And so it really felt like they had the potential to go in there and clean up, see Smile, get another really valuable kill onto the Kunker, but it's by so that time, chemical rage was gone. This is going to be in as well, the Orchid. The blast is it going to connect? Oh, beautiful spell casting. Sableye will get revenge, but that's your puck getting traded for a support. I mean, name a more iconic duo, right? Beast Coast and Piketty's unorthodox offlaners. Not as unorthodox this one, of course. Uh, it's something that's done across the Chinese region. Zai likes to play the uh, the offlane Keeper of the Light as well, but he's making it work for him in a big way. That lane switch up, doing them wonders from the draft. He's had such an incredible game on Whisper. 10-2-7. and seven. Really, everyone on Beast Coast has, has done their role to put themselves in... A commanding position in this game one. Stealing level 25, man. No need for a Midas. Such a big series as well. These Coast tied sixth place with EG with a 4 6 map count, and they're going up against a second place team in Entity. So if you can take some, some maps off the higher place teams, it's going to give them one a lot of confidence and just two. Help them not get eliminated out of the group stages here for the PGL Arlington Major. And they are in a I mean, prime it's, position. It's, it's so close that even the team sitting in second right now could reasonably be forced into tiebreakers, maybe, to go down uh, out of the tournament in this mm. group stage. Like, there's enough games left to play. This is one of the closest majors I've ever seen. Probably the only outlier is LGD. Like, they are basically secured into the upper bracket. But beyond that, everyone else is fair game. Yeah, we're really just seeing how competitive it is. Bunch of 1-1s, bunch of 2 zeros, and going the, the way you'd expect, and then sometimes the way you wouldn't expect, and... Just feels like, though, in, in Beast Coast, in regards to them in this game, they're continuing to find all the items they need. And, man, look at this as well. Sting, he's playing around in, the, in his little army. He's got the Hill Troll Priest as well, so extra amplification coming. That is, uh... <laughs> Oh god, this is stupid Extra stuff. Extra 15%, you'll love it. They're rushing. Okay. They have to go for something kind of crazy. The Mud Golem's gonna scout it out. Deny it. Deny that it. Is... Okay. You gotta get out. Run as fast as you can with the components and just look to keep some numbers alive. Sableye? Oh no, they didn't have detection. Concoction's gonna pop, but it's in the northern side. K1 is trying to target down Toby at the moment. 
And BKB is going to allow him to escape. Meanwhile, Storm Stormer combined with the Winter Wyvern as well. K1 still chasing Toby. Avoid the four stuff as well. So Toby's actually going to be able to make it away. Meanwhile, back inside the lane, Sableye. They'll be able to deal with the first life on the Alchemist, and he doesn't have the Chemical Rage for the second. He does have the BKB at the Rebbe and the Blink as well to reposition. Katomi, it needs to be an incredible curse potentially Not to turn this to one around, line. but it looks like Beast Coast, they're going to respect the buyback. Oh no, they uh, got this. Oh no, he did, they got he the didn't silence. Draw and Katomi's nowhere to be seen to jump in to protect Stormstormer. And now Fishman as well is going to be in trouble. As Beast Coast just have their number in this game. One. What a disaster. Oh, oh they're just Toby layering Lincolns well. on top of Lincolns as well. Yeah, Toby, he's going to be food. They're Sable just dropping one by one. He's going to try and turn it on Gojira, but... Oh, they're all... Dude, they're playing incredible, man. Beast Coast, what a game one. There's just no signs of life. There's nothing Entity can do. This might be the last fight. They got a couple of buybacks, but Sableye is surrounded. What a draft. What a performance. I was hesitant if they were going to be able to execute it, but Beast Coast Show, they've got multiple tools in the wheelhouse to be playing with Beyond Godlike on Whisper. Triple kill for the offlane Keeper of the Light. He might be able to stand his ground and get the puck as well. Look at Whisper playing with his food. The spell casting is incredible. And the G's are dropped. He wants the rampage before this one ends, and unfortunately, he will not get it. Feels bad, but feels great if you are a South American Dota fan. Beast Coast on an absolute rampage today. Able to take uh, some games against pretty well-placed opponents so far throughout this major. And, I mean, if they keep up this style of Dota, they're, they're having a bit of a resurgence as well. Um, one of their other compatriots down towards the bottom end of the table, EG. They're also having another really good day. So, well, anything can happen. Like I said, teams up there can't feel too comfortable in